With the southern swamp behind us, we make our way to the peaks of Termina. After unfreezing an exhibitionist's furnace and stopping a Goron child from vocally assaulting the Goron people, we make it to Snowhead Temple. With its immense verticality and frozen doors, today I'm going to show you what you couldn't have missed in Snowhead Temple. The Snowfall Temple instantly bombards us with some very interesting scenery, with spires of ice to our left and to our right. While many will just leave it at that, if we take a closer look at the way these spires took shape, it seems to be modeled after a ribcage. And the only creature with a ribcage that we know of that has ventured into Snowhead recently was Darmani. This must mean that Darmani, when he perished in Snowhead, his bones became the blueprint for these ominous spires. In the main sanctum and a few other rooms, we come across what seems to be lava pools, melting the layers of ice that have compacted around it. This lava indicates that Snowhead rests on top of an active volcano. This also explains why we have many geothermal hotspots in the Snowhead region, mainly seen in its hot springs. We can also see in the main sanctum the amazing feats that Link is able to pull off with Darmani's power. With a quick estimate of how heavy ice is compared to the volume of the block, we can assume that Darmani's punch has the force to move give or take 34,523 pounds or 15,659 kilograms of ice. This means that if Link had more than 3 days to master Darmani's full power and gained a better technique, he could definitely obliterate any enemy in one punch. The Wizro we see in Snowhead Temple has clearly gone insane. The reason for this insanity though is from his younger years when he was trained in ice magic from Kotake. Even though his training went smoothly, he slowly went insane due to him not having Gerudo blood to control this power, which has left him in this sorry and hostile state. The goat boss fight is one of the most iconic fights inside Majora's Mask. With its speed oriented gameplay, it is a very fun and interesting fight. However, with how loved it is, its predecessor is never covered as much as it should be. Of course, I am referencing the Big Octo mini boss fight in Jabu Jabu's Belly. Both fights depend on a circle arena to keep its identity, and it's great to see this callback in Majora's Mask. And that is the end of this video. If you liked it, you know what to do.